Hello friends and welcome back to my cottage. Our family has been exploring and enjoying spring, but we have also been very busy at our cottage, renovating and just making things new. Today, we're gonna be taking you along with us as we transform and renovate our laundry room. It has turned out so beautiful. We have taken it from the 1980s look and modernized it and given it that French country feel. I'm so excited for you to see our final product. As always, pour yourself a cup of coffee or a cup of tea and let's get to renovating our laundry room. So this is a photo of when we first moved into our home. It's very dated and very dark, and our home was built in 1981, and this photo shows a 1981 laundry room. So this is just a little tour of after we moved in. I had already uh, started painting some of the trim, and we had bought a new washer and a new dryer. Um, so the rest of what I'm showing you is kind of just the before, the old flooring, the old door, um, what the trim was before I started to paint it. Uh, so this is just kind of where we were in the beginning stages. This doorway goes out into our garage. So from our garage, you step into our laundry room and this door frame was just a mess. It was so dirty. Um, and the, the door actually was broken. Um, it is an interior door and they really needed an exterior door here. Um, so this is just kind of showing you all of the old stuff. And then this is my husband taking out all of the wire racks that were in our little linen closet here. So there were uh, some big holes after he took those down. And this is also had doors on it as you've seen in the before photo. And we took those doors off as well. Now my husband is just taking off the bottom trim and this is so that we can lay new flooring and so that I can paint the bottom trim white. My husband did most of the work in the laundry room. Uh, he, he did such a great job. I did the painting and the decorating and that's about it. And now he has taken out this old cabinet that hung up above the washer and dryer. And this cabinet also really dated the laundry room, but it was just big and bulky. And I couldn't sit any of my laundry supplies in this cabinet because the shelves weren't tall enough. Um, so we're taking that out and my husband is going to make some homemade floating shelves for me. And then this is my husband taking out the old flooring. I'm sorry, the camera went sideways here. I have no idea what happened. And 
and then all of the flooring has now been taken out and all of the trim has been painted white now my husband is putting in a new door that leads out into our garage we purchased this door from Menards and it, it, it is an exterior door, I'm sorry. Um, so it's very heavy and uh, it keeps air from kind of flowing inside. This is the water hookup behind the washer and dryer. Uh, we took the frame off and we're repainting that. And this white powder stuff that you see is just a cleaning solution that I put on there to get the rust and the iron and the calcium buildup off of these pipes. It was such a mess. This is the paint that I'm using for the trim. We always use the Dutch Boy Forever brand from Menards. It is the best quality of paint. It is thick, it goes on nice, and this is the ultra white. I always use purdy brushes from Menards. These brushes, uh, they do not shed that much. The bristles stay intact fairly well. And you don't see many brush strokes when you use it. It is by far my favorite brush. And then this is the color that we painted the walls. This is called Stable Gray. Again, it is by the Dutch Boy Forever brand from Menards. And this color just looks so beautiful, especially since I do my home in a French country theme. little linen closet here this is what two coats of the stable gray paint look like so this was the first little space that I painted and you can kind of tell the contrast between the walls and the little linen closet this is the bottom trim and I'm just painting that white now while my husband does some other work inside of the laundry room We decided to do an accent wall behind the washer and dryer, so I used a peel and stick wallpaper. It's the same paper that I've used in my guest half bath, and I've also used this wallpaper in my music room. So if you've seen those previous videos of my music room and my guest bath, you'll see this uh, faux brick wall in there as well. Um, it's it's not that cheap. Uh, it cost us about $80 to just do this one little wall, but it really does add some character. It adds some definition. And again, it kind of just makes this room flow with some other rooms in our home. My husband hung the wallpaper. He's now cutting out where the uh, water line hookups are going. My husband hangs everything in our home just because he's a perfectionist and he loves to measure and he does such a great job of getting things neat and precise. Uh, the hardest part about hanging this paper was indeed lining up the bricks and he also did a great job of doing that and you can't even see the seams. And now we're starting on the flooring. So this flooring we purchased from Home Depot. It's the same hardwood flooring. Uh, it is the oak wire brushed coffee color. And it's the same flooring that's throughout the rest of our home. We had so much trouble finding this flooring to be able to do our laundry room with as well because this room flows into the living room, we wanted it to be the same, 
And I'm also a stickler. I do not like different colors of hardwood. Uh, I think if you're gonna have hardwood, it needs to be the same all throughout your home. Uh, so we actually had to drive an hour and a half away uh, to find a box of this flooring. And then we ran out and needed more, so we actually had to drive three hours away to another state uh, to find more boxes. And they actually told us that they did not know that if they were going to be restocking this flooring at all. So I would leave a link to this flooring in the description for you guys, but I don't think you're going to be able to find it anywhere else. And my husband just uses a little piece of wood with his uh, rubber mallet hammer. Um, there is a tool that you can use to kind of uh, beat the boards into place, so to speak. But he does this so that he has uh, more leverage to just kind of slide those wooden pieces under the trim. And now that the trim is all finished for the bottom, he is now putting that back on. And now it is time to make those floating wooden shelves that I told you guys about in the beginning. We went to Menards to get the woods um, for this. And he just bought three of these bigger water boards. Uh, they were about $21 a piece and he bought three of those. Uh, some wooden dowel rods and then some huge screws to, to be able to hang all of this onto the wall. I'm not going to be able to tell you the exact process that my husband used to make these floating shelves uh, because I'm not a carpenter. He's That is totally his field. But here he is just kind of pre-drilling holes um, and these are where the screws are going to go in to mount this huge piece to the wall. So now my husband is just measuring. He is actually going to cut this piece of wood into two different pieces. And he is doing that because one piece he is going to mount to the wall and then the other piece will just slide on to some wooden dowel rods to create uh, the floating look. So here he is cutting the piece of wood into two pieces. And he has just kind of mounted this smaller piece of wood as just a guide so that his saw stays straight while he is cutting. So you can see the holes where the screws will be going in to hold this onto the wall. Um, so here you see the screw holes and then you see holes with the wooden dowel rods. So these two pieces will go together into the wooden dowel rods to connect um, to create the whole shell. And now he is just sanding the pieces and getting those ready for me to stain. I use the Cordovan Brown. Uh, this is also from Menards and it is a transparent, uh, semi-transparent stain so that you can still see that wood grain after you stain. 
And the shelf is just kind of sitting on the wooden dowel rod. You can see where he cut the two pieces in half and they're not all the way put together so that I can stain it. For staining, I use a sponge brush. That way I do not have to go back and use a cloth to wipe off the excess stain. The sponge brush just kind of allows me to get it all in and not have to go back and wipe off the extra. And I only had to use one coat with this stain. Next, I'm going to be using a polyurethane. So this polyurethane says that it is clear, but it's not. It actually has an amber color to it, which is what I'm wanting. So you can kind of see here where it's not stained and where it is stained. And it, the stain with the amber color just kind of brings out some of those wood tones uh, that I was hoping to achieve. And then this is one floating shelf that is going above the washer and dryer. And this is it mounted to the wall and put together. So now we're hanging two more shelves into the little linen closet area in the laundry room. So I'm gonna try to show you more of how my husband uh, created these shelves. So here he is just those little screw holes that you see. Um, he is kind of pre-drilling on through the wall. You want to make sure you find studs. These shelves are heavy and if you want to be able to sit anything on them, you have to put them in a stud. So he is pre-drilling those studs out now. And so he has screwed those into the wall. And then you can see the little dowel rods that are sticking out. And he is just going to put the shelf and just slide that into the dowel rods. And this is what actually gives support, those wooden dowel rods is what gives support to the shelf so it, that it can float and not fall down. And again, with the second shelf, he is just sliding those wooden dowel rods into those pre-drilled holes. And now that all of that is finished, we finally get to decorate. And so again, my husband hangs everything on the walls for me because he is a perfectionist. He always gets things centered and straight. And so he is my go-to guy for hanging anything on the wall. This laundry room sign I purchased from Hobby Lobby along with these candle sconces. They had that French country look that I was going for and was just the perfect size for this space. And now I'm just filling up some canisters that are going to go on my floating shelf above the washer and dryer. These canisters I purchased from Target. And I'm just filling them with some Tide Pods and some Downy Pods and uh, different things that I use when I do laundry. These bigger containers I purchased from Hobby Lobby. They have a little flow spout on them. Uh, so I am putting my laundry detergent and my fabric softener into these bigger jars.
and these cute little clothespins I also purchased from Hobby Lobby. I've placed battery operated candles on my little candle wall sconces so those are not real flames. And then I purchased these little wicker baskets and the, flow, the faux hydrangeas, I'm sorry. All of these are from Hobby Lobby. And then this is what my floating shelf above the washer and dryer look like all decorated. And it's so nice to have everything that I need to put into the washing machine and to the dryer right up above it. And then this little wash, dry, fold, repeat uh, thing I got from Hobby Lobby as well. This rug I purchased from Target. The colors just went so great in here with everything else. And it also had that French country design and feel that I was going for. Now I've already started a load of laundry. And I'm just loving this new space and how everything turned out. Of course, we replaced light fixtures and updated those. Uh, we replaced the vents in the flooring. We got new um, electrical outlets, new door handles and hinges. Everything in this room has been replaced. Our washer and dryer is a Samsung. This dryer is, and the washer both, are so big. We have a big family, uh, so it does a lot of laundry, and we purchased those from Best Buy. Here's our new door. And then this is the little linen closet, all completed. I purchased these wicker uh, hampers from at home. Those were $50 a piece. And they just look so cute in this little linen closet uh, to place our dirty laundry in. The shelves here, I'm not completely done with those. I plan to actually hang this wicker laundry basket onto the wall. And then I want to get some smaller wicker baskets uh, to go on the two shelves just to kind of hold everything. And then this store leads right off of our living room into our laundry room. And then again, these faux hydrangeas are all throughout my home, so of course they're in the laundry room as well, just to tie everything in together. And then there is no light in this little linen closet. We kept the doors off, but I just put uh, that little candle type lamp in there for extra light and then this basket just holds some extra uh, laundry pods and dryer sheets and like I said I plan to get more for these shelves and then this is uh, in the evening when I just have my candles going it's just so nice and relaxing just any time of the day to be able to come in here and to do laundry. It smells good, it's so pretty, and it actually makes me wanna do laundry now. 
Thank you, friends, for watching today. I hope that you're now ready to make over your laundry room and that you've gained some inspiration from this video. As always, if you have any questions, please leave those in the comments. I love talking with you guys. Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, I'm doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? Isaiah 43, 19. Thank you so much, friends, for watching, subscribing, and commenting. For more inspirational tips like this, you can follow me on Instagram at Coddle Cottage.